to another vlog. I am currently driving to work. Um, if you guys are new here, my name is Amanda. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm vegan. I do yoga. If you like that kind of stuff, nutrition, health, wellness, and whatnot, and vlogs, because that's pretty much what I like to make and I like to sit down and chat with you, um, make sure you press that subscribe button and uh, press notifications if you want to know when I'm posting. If not, well, you made it this far, so I appreciate you being here anyway. Today is going to be a another dietitian um what do i call them i haven't done them in so long because i've been so busy since school started but it's going to be a day in the life of a clinical dietitian currently i work in the hospital um like i said before and as a clinical dietitian i don't give people meal plans like i don't tell them okay for breakfast lunch and dinner you eat this i just make sure that patients are getting the right amount of energy that they need for their specific body for their specific condition um, i help and make sure that they're getting the right tube feeding educate patients on diet and um I talked about this before, but yes, I do talk about plant-based diets, but it's not something that I push on them. I just offer it to them um, as an idea to look up and think about, but at the time, it's not really appropriate to be like, hey, you should go vegan. So I just tell them about like eating more plant-based meals, and honestly, all the dietitians in the office are in this common consensus that eating more plant-based meals is generally better for your health. So. I don't think that there is a problem with that. I'll see you guys over in the office and make sure you stick around if you want to um, hear about a little case study for these dietitian vlogs. I normally like to share a case study where I change enough information so you don't know who the patient is or really like you can't identify them at all but I like to share little um, situations and how I as a dietitian can intervene and um, help that situation. So. Make sure you stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in a little bit. I'm off, and I just dropped my water bottle on my foot. All right, so Miss Jo Cinders is a 65-year-old female admitted for urinary tract infection. She presented to the emergency room with an altered mental state, meaning she was just in there. She was kind of like confused, which happens a lot with people who get infections sometimes, especially the older population. So literally that's all I could find on her present state, her present diagnoses, because she was a new admit. She just gotten admitted the night before. She's just laying in bed. I come into work early in the morning, so there's not really much else going on. The doctors haven't even come and rounded and completed their notes yet. So I really couldn't give a complete background like she has diabetes, she has hypertension, she has cardiovascular disease. I just have to go off of the fact that she came in with an altered mental state and she had a UTI. So the reason why I went in to go see her is because she had a Braden score of 8 and Braden score is basically the um, the, the score that's given to you based on the like integrity of your skin the lower the Braden score is the more at risk you are of having a like a skin wound like a pressure ulcer which I've talked a lot about in my other dietitian clinical case studies so make sure you check those out if you want a little more a little more background on um, wounds and pressure ulcers pressure injuries as they would also be called so um, I was supposed to see her for that low Braden score she also already did have wounds meaning She's probably bedridden um, and her skin's already weak, so she has some like pressure ulcers. So she also had a swallow evaluation. Now, dietitians are supposed to see patients, all the patients who have a swallow evaluation ordered because we're supposed to be the ones to oversee. Okay, so they failed their swallow evaluation, meaning they can't swallow safely, so they have to have tube feeding or other sorts of nutrition um, given to them. Or yes, they finished, or yes, they passed their swallow evaluation. Great, so let's give them a diet that is meant for their condition so for this lady um, when I went in to go look at her chart I want to see her swallow evaluation and the speech therapist or the speech language pathologist wrote in her note she tested out different types of foods and liquids to see if the patient is safe enough to drink or um, like eat food by themselves because what we don't want is to give somebody a oral diet and then they end up choking on water, they choke on food, and then it just takes us like five steps back. So anytime that somebody comes in that's altered or doesn't seem like they can 
can't swallow or speak or anything properly we have to make sure that they can swallow safely by themselves otherwise we run the risk of aspiration which means that they just choke on their food which just causes a whole big issue of problems that we really don't need right now because we're trying to focus on this lady's uti we're trying to focus on her altered level of consciousness so she said severe oral phage oral pharyngeal dysphagia which basically just means that you know she can't swallow um, significantly worsened since previous speech therapy bedside swallow evaluation in February 2019 per her chart review. So it seems like this patient already has had a visit over in the hospital and also failed her swallow eval, um, but not as bad as before. So the speech therapist recommended um, nothing by mouth, NPO, which means nil per os, which is Latin for just don't have anything by mouth, which is something which is an order that doctors usually give patients before you know surgeries or if a patient is not safe to eat anything, um, they do NPO and may benefit from small amounts like one third teaspoon presentation of just water just for oral gratification. So something like ice chips or something. Oral gratification just means allowing the patient to have something in their mouth and then we'll gather more information when son is present. So this patient's son is the power of attorney meaning the patient meaning the son has the power to, you know, say I want tube feeding, I don't want tube feeding, I want this I want my mom to, you know, go through with the whole intubation thing or I want her to just go home with hospice which is basically just um going home, having caretakers go to the house and making sure that the patient's comfortable and whatnot. So when I went to go visit, I saw that the patient wasn't even responsive. And this happens a lot with the patients that I see who have swallow evaluations and fail is that they're not responsive. They're already intubated, meaning they have a tube in them already. But this patient has not had any tubes in because they still had to discuss with the son um, the results of the swallow evaluation, which literally just happened. So the son hasn't had a chance to come by, talk to the doctor or the nurse about it yet. So when I went in there, patient wasn't able to respond to anything I was saying, really was just staring up in the ceiling. Um, we really don't know what has happened yet because no tests have been run or the results haven't been interpreted yet. Usually we have like a CT scan, brain scan, MRI to see was there a cerebrovascular accident, also known as a stroke, which means that the patient's brain has been impaired. Um, we really don't know what has happened. So I kind of have to make a diagnosis from here and figure out, okay, how are we going to get this patient to eat anything? So when I went in there, obviously patient wasn't responding. I talked to the nurse. So I wrote per RN, two days prior to the admit, the patient has had difficulty swallowing and drinking liquid and was on a soft diet. So patient was eating just fine earlier with the sun, but then got admitted and wasn't able to swallow or respond or really eat anything safely. There was a sitter at the bedside. Sitter is somebody who just watches the patient and makes sure that the patient doesn't like hurt themselves or choke or anything. So the sitter was also there when I was visiting. She said that the son was coming today and um, the nurse notified the son about the failed swallow evaluation. So we're gonna figure out if this patient's gonna get tube feeding or not. In my opinion, the best bet would be tube feeding for now because if the patient patient's swallow function does come back, at least the patient has had some nutrition in that time and isn't like super cachectic or their muscle hasn't been wasted. Um, they've been able to get some nutrition. In these cases, there's usually not just one problem, right? So the next problem is that it seems like the patient has lost a lot of weight. She was super like hollowed out in her temples when I did a nutrition focused physical exam, which is basically dietitian comes in, touches the temples, touches forehead, touches cheeks, touches clavicles and um, shoulders, looks at the arm to see like, is there any muscle? Um, does it look like there's fat wasted on there? We touch their, um, lightly touch their legs to see, you know, is there bone? Because that can indicate fat and muscle loss over a long period of time. And this patient was very, very wasted. She didn't look like she was eating very much at all, even though she was on a soft diet. And I look in her chart and it showed that she actually lost 7% of her weight in five months and actually 16% of her weight loss in one year, which qualifies for malnutrition. So I just put physiological causes and as evidenced by muscle mass and fat loss, weight loss, 
She's also had impaired nutrition intake for five days, supposedly, but I've been unable to confirm that since she has been nonverbal. There's not really that much history left on the chart for me to look at. And my intervention is I gave a tube feeding recommendation. This many calories, protein, whatever for her estimated needs. Um, another thing is to consider the addition of vitamin C to encourage wound healing because vitamin C, zinc, and multivitamin are the three things that I try to recommend to have for patients who do have wounds because it helps with skin integrity and skin strength that's why you'll always see like youtubers be like oh we start my morning with like lemon water because the vitamin c helps strength in skin and it's not bs guys like for real that's what we even recommend in the hospital too so i submitted a recommendation i submitted a malnutrition form because when we do that then the doctors and the insurance and people are able to cover that more and they're able to see like this is a patient that really needs feeding. For the follow-up date, I put two days because I wanted to make sure that this patient is getting some kind of nutrition. Now I said if swallow function returns, recommend returning to soft diets, caution or aspiration caution as well as making sure that there is a feeder there to feed her her food if she can eat. That is my um, pretty sad case study and that's an example of the type of conditions and cases that i run into the hospital so it's not just people who are able to talk who i talk about diet all the time being a dietitian doesn't just mean sitting down and writing a diet plan it also means making sure that all patients are getting the type of diet that they need all patients are getting nutrition that is appropriate for their body in that acute state at that moment. I hope that was interesting for you guys and now we're going to move on to the next segment of this and it's basically a chit chat update of my life. <laughs> Instead of water, I actually decided to get me some CBD oil. This is, I've talked about this before, and this is actually the only CBD oil that I've been using lately. I did use um, a different brand before, but that was like full spectrum CBD oil, but this is my jam. So this is a pharmacist formula CBD from Green Roads, which again, I have talked about before, so make sure you check out the link in the description below for that first video. So. This past week has pretty much been a hellhole for me because I was working as well as taking two really hard classes and in the beginning of this whole semester, um, let's backtrack a little bit more, I'm taking organic, or I was, I registered for organic chemistry and physics because I have two more classes, potentially three more classes that I need to take a full year sequence of in order to apply for medical school, which is the ultimate goal. Like yes, right now I'm a dietitian, but I do plan on going to med school in the future. It's going to be a long winding road, but I like that's my ultimate dream. It's my goal right now. So I took a year off after I had graduated. Um, I took my RD exam. I got a job as a dietitian. And now I'm here. I started school in the beginning of the month, actually the end of Oct. The end. What month? The freak month is it? I started at the end of August. I registered for both organic chemistry and physics. So along with just moving and just taking those classes, I was averaging maybe three to four hours this past week of sleep because I just like was struggling to get everything done. I've made sure that there are some things I needed to do to manage my stress and I think now is a perfect time to talk about the things that I've been doing to manage my stress in these times. The first thing is I decided to reach out to people because I felt like I was alone. I was like, man, I'm such a failure. I'm alone in this struggle, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what? No, I have family and I have friends who care about me. I need to reach out and prove to myself that I am not alone. That way those little demons that used to bother me, that used to get me, that used to pull me into these like really bad mental health traps, um, don't pull me back again. So I told them, look, I'm not really looking for any solutions. I just wanted to talk about it and like let it out in the universe that I'm not alone in this struggle. And they completely understood and knowing that I was supported really helped ease the load. And they, even though I wasn't looking for um, solutions, give, them giving me their feedback was really helpful. Thank God throughout the week I had at least CBD oil. Like I could feel my stress building up. Let's rewind a little bit. What the heck is CBD? So CBD is an abbreviation for cannabid cannabidiol 
which is the non-psychoactive component of the marijuana plant. So it's the part of it that's not THC, that doesn't get you high, and Green Road CBD extract is actually um, very, very low in THC, so low that it's not going to show up on drug tests. I get a lot of questions about, okay, is this gonna show up on drug tests because I don't wanna take it, and is it gonna get me high? First of all, no, it's not gonna get you high, and second of all, it's not gonna show up on drug tests. Trust me, I used CBD through my drug screening process, and I got hired. So CBD has been used for a lot of not only physical but also mental aspects. Physical as in physical pain, soreness, joints, muscle fatigue, as well as mental aspects in terms of overall stress. CBD has also been shown to help some people with their sleep as well. Personally, it has helped me with feeling more calm and relaxed at night. And you could get eight hours of sleep, but if your eight hours of sleep is under a stressful situation and your body and your mind are not in cue, then your eight hours of sleep is not gonna be as restful as a six hour sleep that's completely rested and um, not stressful. Do you get what I mean? Do you get where I'm coming from? So, um, our body actually has this thing called an endocannabinoid system, which is super cool. It's a group of receptors that's present not only in um, animals, but also humans, and it helps to keep the body in balance. You'll find a lot of endocannabinoid receptors in your brain, as well as your digestive system, as well as your, I was gonna say gut, but that's the same thing, as well as your muscles. It impacts a wide range of health and disease-related conditions, so it's important to keep that in track or in check. So the way CBD works is that it attaches to the receptors in our endocannabinoid system and keeps our body balanced and healthy. So this week in particular, I've been doing a lot of CBD stuff just so I can like try to stay as stay sane as possible. Now, I don't normally go as hard in the paint with this anti-stress stuff, but I knew that extra stress would not be good for me. Extra stress is just not good for your hormones and especially for sleep because we all know that REM sleep is so important for brain function and refreshing and renewing and if I don't get good quality sleep, then I don't function that well. I have to take care of myself so I can better take care of other people. And in order to do that during these times, things like CBD, yoga, talking to people, journaling, drinking calming teas, drinking, uh, there's a CBD coffee that Green Roads has that I've been drinking as well. That is really, really helpful. So a CBD works and I'm actually, I've been waiting to use this so I can explain it to you and then drop it under my tongue. So you can drop it under your tongue and hold it <laughs> under your tongue for a 30 second and the reason why is because there's like a thin layer of skin under your tongue that goes directly to your bloodstream so you can get as much like CBD I guess absorbed into that bloodstream and then you swallow. There's also CBD gummies these are the relief toads these are actually the only gummies I think Think that are vegan the other ones have gelatin in them but this one is vegan obviously it says vegan right there so there are options for us plant people so these I like to take when I'm feeling super extra but this week I'm okay I don't really need to take them plus I kind of want to save them for a rainy day so the CBD oil is all I really need if you're interested in trying out CBD, you want to try out Green Roads, make sure you check out the link in the description below. Um, I have a 15% off discount if you want to try it and um, experiment. What I like to tell people is it's definitely not going to do you any harm. Like worst case scenario, it does nothing. Best case scenario, it helps you during a very overwhelming, stressful time in your life. It helps you fall asleep faster. It helps you like re recover faster because your stress lowers. Let me tell you something about stress, okay? Stress can mess up your skin, it can mess up your hair and your nails, and also mess up digestion. When I'm super stressed, my digestion just goes down south and it's just a bad feedback loop because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not pooping. And then, <laughs> and then I'm stressed about the fact that I'm not pooping and I'm not pooping because I'm stressed. It's just not a good look, y'all. So also, stress can also make you hold on to fat, water retention, and it just is not, overall a good look so we try to avoid stress as much as possible and stay as sane as we can not only to help ourselves but like i said before to help other people so yeah that's you know if you want to try it out you're welcome to and i really appreciate if you go through the link in my description but you do what you want we are ending the vlog up with this i hope you guys enjoyed this case study this little talk about stress my life update day in the life thing i know it's going to be really really long so i really appreciate if you've made it this far 
If you like this video, make sure you press the like button, subscribe if you haven't and you want to see more. And I will, um, yeah, I'll definitely see you in the next one. Wishing you a wonderful morning, noon, day, or night, wherever you are. <laughs> Bye.